at uh, 11.03. And moving merrily along, review proposed projects and prepare recommendations to Board of Selectmen for inclusion in 2021-2022 budget. So what I am gonna do Catherine, could I share something? Because it may shape the rest of the conversation. Very good. Thank you. So I did a little research and had an additional conversation with uh, Mike Serrano from Friar and Associates about the roof planning. Um, seems that the State Board of Education has changed the way that they do things. You don't need to have a full set of plans before you submit an application for approval. Yeah. Um, you know, the Board of Ed will have to take certain actions. The Board of Selectmen will have to take yeah. certain actions. But it's really about um, getting your paperwork and application in order. So the good news is that the only monies that we would need to uh, put aside to start on that project for next year is $10,000, not the 136. dollars <laughs> wow. So That's it's ten thousand. It's it would be the ten thousand plus the the funding for the the solar planning, um, and I don't remember what that number was off the top of my head, but um, around forty. Well, there was a part of it that we were recommending they they consider using the unexpended funds account for, but there was a piece of it that needed to be right now. Um, yes, let me check for that. that so basically, we, if we were we had a basically if we took a hunt go ahead i think uh what we had was like for right now we had something down here for the 17,500 in the current fiscal year which was a, a kind of a surprise we did we put that in there just to reflect that that was an amount that was needed this year and i thought that was for that solar was for, that was for grandfathering in before the change in april with regard to um the utilities company and their solar policies okay and that's yes, because we have a uh, deadline um, of to April. get that information. Of April in. to get the applications in. So what I'm going to do in our meeting is let me get back to it. I am going to share my screen, and I think I can do this. So I thought that was really good news. Yes, I Absolutely. I do so, as well. So the you know the balance of the the money that we would need for the planning would would potentially end up as part of your bonding project and all of it would be subject uh you know at the reimbursement rate can you see the spreadsheet yes yes okay yeah, good. One, one more point before we start jim i think the money that was required now for the roof slash energy project was the fifteen thousand for the energy modeling is it 15 no, or 17 that was, that was it was, was it? so the seventeen, the seventeen five, Catherine, is what we were recommending be coming out of the unexpended funds account. There was fifteen. There was fifteen thousand in that hundred and fifty one for uh, this, you know, for for current fiscal year planning. Um, so that would be that would be a total that one fifty one would change to twenty five. And this one that that would cover what? That would cover the uh, roof planning, so that we could get our applications in, and that would cover the energy modeling. The seventeen five we were proposing come out of the unexpended funds account, so that that could be utilized in this current fiscal year to pay the solar consultant to get our applications in order and get that submitted. So that was for planning and for, um, you know, for the whole paperwork process. Was that planning for the solar or planning yes, for everything? Yes, for the solar. So Jim, can I just uh, get a clarification? It sounds to me uh, like what you guys are suggesting is that that 17,500 that's needed for this year comes out of the Ashford School Unexpended Fund. Correct. And so, Catherine, <clears throat> couple notes uh, down at the bottle, bottom yeah. under suggested funding, we would like to add that. And I'll also, I think that Jim is using the correct 
uh, terminology. We have the Ashford School 1% fund. I think we should uh, change it to Jim's wording. It's more accurate. Yeah, I think we originally called it the 1% fund, but then, right. then we changed it to unexpended funds account. His official like name is that. Yeah, yeah, and I think we should try to work with that so that we start over the years to get some continuity in that language. Got it. Okay, so uh, that amount is going to be down here under funding. And again, that was the 17.5. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and this is directed to Marion, who I think is the only one who's a Board of Ed member on this committee, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, so Marion, just so that you have a heads up, um, if you guys look at our minutes, which haven't been issued yet, but, um, you know, one of the things that we were calculating in our CNR, uh, transfer from, from, um, undesignated fund into CNR, we, in our calculations are anticipating the board of ed <laughs> Requesting that funding go into your unexpended fund. Okay. So again, we have to have a formal request from the Board of Ed to move monies into that account. Okay, just a second. Let me get something to write these notes down because I will forget after I um, leave this meeting in about <coughs> five minutes. So. And uh, actually, I'd like to uh, kind of uh, go on with that thought, Chuck, yep. oh, which is Can your time. Back? Back? Sorry? Let's just wait I, for Marion. You said to wait until she got back. Oh, sure. Okay. Guys, hey, this is Wayne. Jimmy? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm a little foggy today, but I had to leave the last meeting early and I see the 151 on roof replacement. Yep. And now away. I hear you speak 25,000. Could you yes. just go over that for me again? Yes. yes. So uh, I looked at I looked at the State Board of Education's website and what actually had to be done in order to get an application in and I also spoke with Michael Serrano from Friar and Associates who is a gentleman that the school board has worked with. Uh, he's an architect. And so yep. I spoke with him and said, you know, how much money do we, you know, I looked at the State Board of Ed, and it seems to me that we don't have to put the whole 136000 for roof planning up in this next fiscal year, that some of that can be paid at a later date. So please tell me how this works. So he said, you know, if you were to, you know, um, employ us, to do this, you know, we would probably need uh, somewhere in the five to ten thousand dollar range, ten being the top that we would need in order to get the paperwork in place. So a lot of those funds can be done at a later date. Apparently, what was happening is that people would spend the hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. They would plan the entire roof project. They would put it before the State Board of Education. And then for whatever reason, the taxpayers would choose not to fund the project, but the State Board of Education found themselves on the hook for the reimbursement part of that $136,000, if you will. So the State okay, Board of Education, so they've changed the way they do business. What they okay. want you to do is to do some basic paperwork, get your applications in order, get the Board of Ed to act and re, you know and and act and actually they have to provide a copy of the minutes from the board of ed, and the board of selectmen have to do three separate resolutions and i can't remember what those are but but there's three separate resolutions so that before the state board of education commits to a whole bunch of money the town has committed to fund the project wise move <laughs> so so that's how we got from because the 151 was a combination of a cost for energy modeling of the school and $136,000 for uh, the roof planning. So we've, okay. we've gotten that down to $10,000 in the next fiscal year. So roof planning is 10, 10K? Correct. 
But the twenty five thousand includes the the and, solar modeling. Right, and there's fifteen thousand dollars for energy modeling uh, for for the school building, so that the school building committee has some ideas when they're talking about you know solar and energy upgrades and heating systems. You know, they have some idea of what can be accomplished through the energy modeling. So the total for energy modeling and the roof replacement is 35K? 25. 25K. 25K. Now, let me ask beyond that, that's for the upcoming fiscal year. What about in the following year? Is there more of that work? So, so that you would Why am I getting an echo? I don't know. We all are. I'm, I'm not getting an echo. Do you but have a phone on? I or don't know. Else on line? It disappeared. I okay. Just turn my volume down. So, Thank you. so the rest, the rest of the funding for the roof project, you would be able to roll into your bond. Okay. That's a good thing. So we had looked at the bonding happening in. Let me just make sure I get this right. 23, 24. So what happens in 22, 23? Nothing? Are we not going to bond that year? I, yeah, I think we were hoping to be able to do the roof in, in, in the following fiscal year, which okay. would be 22, 23. Catherine, I think that's just a placeholder. You know, just when it went, as soon as we can bond, we're going to do it, would be my guess. We're just, all right. I'm just trying to look at what we think we're projecting here. So what I have is, for um, 22, year 20. ending 22 is 25,000. For year ending 23, it's 4 million. Correct. Okay. I just want, for all of us uh, and, the, and people who see this, just kind of our general plan. So what, what about the 17.5 in this current year? Yeah, what's this supposed to be from the, that's for solar planning. What does that really mean? So that, that would really mean that the Board of Education would have to make their steps, you know, to request that funding from the Board of Finance, and then it would have to be approved by the Board of Finance. Right. They would have to go out to bid for these services and, and choose somebody for, those, for that scope of service. So that, you know, if the Board of Ed wants to pursue this, they've got to do it very quickly if they're going to find a, a vendor and get their applications in sometime in April. So, so let me, Catherine, can I suggest, take, can I yeah. just make a suggestion again, uh, it, if the Board of uh, Ed wants to pursue this, it would seem to me that they would come to the Board of Finance requesting the, yep. uh, the, the, the move of money uh, into their, um, you know, one percent fund, <laughs> um, and and also make the request for for the resources needed for this um, solar application. Well, let me let me take that a step further. They already have money in the one percent fund that'll cover this. Correct. Why do they need to request more? Uh, they have the ability. We have already calculated. They haven't they haven't responded to the audit from last year yet. They have monies available to move into that fund that they are apparently unaware of. Okay, even so, the that fund at the end of June 2020, we put this in here. Here we go. Has an audited balance of $57,010 in the Ashford unexpended fund account. That's as of then. That's from the audit. And so what exactly do we have to do? Let me, can I just finish my thought here? Sure. You already have, if I understand correctly, because I don't think you've had any withdrawals from it in the meantime, and Board of Finance can confirm that because they're the ones that approve the withdrawals from the unexpended account. Right now, or at least at the end of June 2020, that audit, you had an audited balance of $57,000 in the unexpended fund account. Okay. Okay. And now, based upon, if I understand correctly, based upon um, uh, 
so that was before you ever, uh, before the audit, I'm sorry, before the school did not make a request within the last fiscal year to move monies into that account. So Chuck, you're saying they have even more monies that can be rolled into that account. They simply haven't made the request. That's and those, correct. those monies are based upon what was left over in the school budget at the end of fiscal year 2020. Correct. Okay, so there's more money coming into that. And the reason I'm kind of pointing at the 1% uh, at the unexpended fund account is because whatever they're looking for for some of these things can be taken from that account versus CNR. That's correct. Okay, so I would again, vote for that. You're what? You're what? This is Wayne. If we have if they have fifty thousand dollars sitting there yep. and they're looking for seventeen five from the last year no, and no. twenty five more, take it out of the one percent fund. That's actually what I'm saying, Wayne. I agree with you. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Okay, good. <laughs> um so the amount that the school had left over last year which they have not come forth to the Board of Finance to ask to be rolled over. Do us anybody know what that amount is? It's about 59,000. Got $100,000. Mm -hmm. Holy moly. Okay, and we also yeah. have to, yeah, okay. So, um, all right. So I don't wanna jump around too much, but we also have, have, have we heard anything more about this heater? Exchanger, it, heat exchanger? Yes. John and I had a meeting yesterday with uh, Mike Melody and Rick from their mechanical service company. Mm -hmm. um, John, I'll, I'll start off, but then I'd really like you to jump in. Basically, what we got out of the meeting is that, you know, this uh, heat exchanger was rebuilt about well, maybe 17 or 18 years ago that they're not sure if it can be rebuilt again because what happens over time is this is a this unit is made from steel and the, the the steel gets thinner over time so they're not sure if it can be rebuilt again they don't know what the cost of rebuilding it would be um they also don't know how long it will last he said it could last five minutes five weeks or five years um so realistically you know we we don't have any idea how long it will last john asked some really good questions yesterday about you know does it have to be you know this high end custom made heat exchanger or you know is it possible that we could use two smaller heat exchangers that come off the shelf and they were reluctant to really even answer that question but kind of the answer we got was, well, it could require a bunch of repiping. You know, we could quickly get up into the same price range as you're in now for, you know, replacing the unit. Um, and John, I'd like you to jump in and take over seemed from like there. Seemed like, a lot of seemed like a lot of deflection to me. Deflection? Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I train salesmen, I've been in for 40 years. And when I, when I detect someone deflecting or pushing it downstream, I get really nervous. And that's what I got yesterday from this guy. Interesting. We got no definitive answers. Okay, so looking at this, looking at what the school has asked for that's beyond the school bus, okay? In these years. They have enough money to pay for it. They've got enough money. They got 99,500 in terms of what they want to spend. And from what I gather, um, and, and regardless of whether or not they come to the Board of Finance to move that money that's left over from the last fis uh, school year, fiscal year, um, there is enough money in the unexpended fund plus what was left over from last year to pay for what they're asking for here. Leftover money from last year again was 59000 we believe it was about 59,000, correct? Yes. Chuck? Yep. And what they had in their unexpended account was 57,000. Was... Yeah. Yeah. So they've got enough money that, um, remember, that unexpended 
fund account was really to be used for capital improvements that were basically approved. Okay. Um, they were to be, have been approved and on this list, if you will, this approved list. So it's a matter of uh, approving those items, then the monies can be spent. And Chuck, what I was alluding to is even if they didn't come to you to have to move that money over, you have the power to use it for that. You can, it'll, it would, it, when they don't ask to have money moved over, it goes into our undesignated fund. Correct. Actually, it stays in the undesignated fund because that's where it's sitting right now. Correct. If I, if I understand correctly. So, um, so I think there's enough money there that they can take care of their own business through that. So, Kat, um, can I jump in? Yes, of course. Yes, Wayne. Yes, Wayne. Well, I'm looking at the numbers. The, the supposed replace heat exchanger was around 37K. Got it. Uh, what, Jim? What Jim and Nat was talking about today is 25K. Yep. And the 17.5 from the previous year. And 20,000 uh, to replace the lockers next year. Not next year, but the year after. I don't we even show. see that on this. Um, the thought, one that was. I thought the lockers were going to wait for the bonding because we didn't figure in <coughs> demolition, installation, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, All right. So that out to 22, total this up. I come up to about $80,000, and I agree that the 1% fund, unexpended fund, whatever you want to title it as, yep. that's what it was put there for. And yep. I don't think yep. it should add to the CNR for these three projects because the money's there. Absolutely. Yeah, and so par partly what I'd like all of us, you know, hopefully to do is, you know, we don't have to get the Board of Ed to agree to these things. So I think um, I think they're going to be pretty open to this, but they do have to request. And so, uh, so Wayne, I'm agreeing with you, and they probably are going to, but we do, um, you know, we do need to get them to, to make that uh, uh, request. You know, they have a variety of things that they would like to try to accomplish. Um, but well, so do I. Things, I'm sure that they would like to, to act on quickly. So I think if we can uh, encourage them to, to utilize the funds that way, it, they probably will. Well, first, first and foremost, do they have to request that that 59,000 get kicked into um, the 1% of the unexpended fund first? Correct. <laughs> Mary, you have to, Mary, you have to make sure that gets done. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? You've done Sarah, that I'll every be, year. I'll, Your I'll superintendent do it every knows year. how John, to do it. John should know how to do it. So you just have to make a form. Now, typically, we have a formal request in person. I've I've gotten my uh, head bitten off a couple times where things to me seem like a no brainer, and I've just gone ahead and tried to have them just done. Uh, people react almost violently. Um, so you have to have a formal request to come state the obvious, and then yep. we all say yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Marion, bottom line, it's a letter. Okay. That comes from your, uh, your board of ed or your superintendent, however you want to work it. Okay. So, th so that it's documented and it says, um, also it would not be a bad idea if you gave an idea of what you think you wanted that to use that for. Okay. So what we do is we ask, first off, we asked for the $59,000 to be rolled over to the 1% fund. Take, yeah, taken from the undesignated fund to the, the 1%. Undesignated fund. Uh, or unexpended fund, what is it? In, in, into the unexpended fund. So you, you guys have an unexpended fund or slash 1% fund, okay. but it goes from, um, uh, it goes from the uh, town's undesignated fund into um, the unexpended fund for the school. Ashford School unex Unexpended Fund. And what I would, re I would suggest is double checking with uh, uh, Cheryl Baker as to the exact number. Okay. Yes. Because it's more, it's a slightly more than 50, it's like $59,327 or so, you know, I mean, I'm just making actually, that up, but it's something actually, like that. It's in the audit report. Correct. 
Okay, that's as, as simple as that. It's in the audit report. So, so Jim, Jim or John should be able to secure that number accurately and make that request. And I think that what we would accept, obviously, is a Zoom meeting request. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if John or Jim get a hold of me and, and request an agenda item at our next meeting, we would we would make that an agenda item to consider that request. And Chuck, what you want, Chuck, just to jump in a little bit, yep. um, what you want is you want a letter from them yep. so that it can be attached to your minutes. Okay. okay? So okay, that is the form, formal request and you go before the Board of Finance okay. and that will be done in the Zoom meeting. I've got that. Now, Good. when we do that, then do we re also request for these various items that we want, like the roof replacement, solar... You they I also have the to only, do a formal request for that, Chuck. Yeah, so Catherine, I think the only thing that we would be considering this time around is the 175. Okay. Correct? I uh, you would start with that. Then they would I come think, back with right. the other and ask for the other once Correct. we get through this budget process. Right. And so what I'm getting at is we are jumping the queue slightly with the 17.5 because it hasn't been formally approved by the voters. Correct. Does it, does it have to be formally approved by the voters? Uh, it should be, but but we, I believe, have the discretion based on your request. But what we would like to do as best as possible is have these items in our five-year capital plan that gets approved by the voters and then it then, then these are approved by the voters. We can use our discretion on this 17.5, which I'm willing to do, but technically they haven't been approved by the voters. Okay. okay. Correct. What will be nice um, when you uh, put forth the budget package, you could put that up in the letter that this is one of those items that was uh, added in. Okay. Uh, not you, Marion, but Chuck. Okay. Yep. Now, um, so, uh, uh, okay, I'm losing my mind. Uh, so now we need to go out for proposal for these solar application things. Good job. Is that what you're, what you're saying? Um, or school Jim, job. Rupert? Well, I believe I believe it's over the amount that uh, you can just hire somebody. So I, yes, I believe you need to put specifications together and go out to bid for this after the money is approved. You can't really well I suppose you could do it before the money is approved, contingent on the approval of the fund. Okay. Can they look on the state bid list and see who qualifies for not going out to bid? I'm not sure they're going to get what they want, but we could certainly do that. Okay. So is that something uh, that this is, should expect? Uh, the individual that they've spoken to is not just a run-of-the-mill solar company. Had lots of different options, um, and they try to opt the value that you get based on the model. It's not, not every company to do. Is they're not looking at something that's cookie cutter. Okay, so Jim, should I? Um, uh, I mean, we're going to be talking about have, this in our next. Marion, I will have a conversation with Dr. Mungo and Jen Barcelo on Tuesday next week. Help them get the ball rolling on what they need to do here. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Hey, Jim, just as a refresher, the 17,000 uh, place mark came from what? That was, there was, uh, there were, there were two things in the proposal that uh, Mark sent us. That's what I thought. One, I believe, was uh, 12, 5, and the other one was 5,000. One of them was the planning and paperwork to get the applications in, and the other one was coordination with the um the roof contract the the, the uh, roof designer to actually design both the roof and the solar array to work in harmony with each other yeah i didn't i didn't print that portion of last thing last time to me thank you thank you 
Okay, we'll be considering, uh, we're gonna be considering this on our next uh, Board of Ed meeting, which is Thursday. So hopefully we can get this all. And again, that's time sensitive. We, we run out of time on April to get into this year's or, or to, to beat the new changes. Right, we're moving on it. Okay, we ready to move off of this? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, looking down here, what else did we have that was tentative? All right, so that has changed. Has that changed our, oh, I gotta do the calculation. Oops. Uh, I'm just looking at what our numbers will be. I've talked with Joe, this mini excavator, we really, should get. Um, he thinks that he may be able to reduce the 225 here to 205,000. He thinks he'll have enough carryover to cover the 20, provided we don't have any major, major, major snowstorms. So uh, I don't know where to go with this. I would be in favor of getting it. I think it's foolish not to. Uh, I talked to Joe also, and I don't think he's snowing us. I think this is a real need, and I think oh, yeah. I would be in favor of doing that. And also, partly in combination with um, you know what we're talking about, having the Ashford School help us through the unexpended fund. If we can take that thirty-seven thousand, and also um, tentatively put it it's funding under under the unexpended fund yeah you know again if we make that assumption that they are going to are to agree to that um, that that takes another 37,000 off the table uh, which makes that excavator certainly a lot more pal palatable thank you could i ask a question please this is wayne yep yep as i understand it in our discussion Right now, the Ashford School is only looking for a school bus out of CNR. Is that correct? Correct. The selectmen are looking for a school bus. <laughs> what we did was we checked to we we checked to see um, uh, checked with two people. We checked with the person who maintains the school buses, and uh, I think the person who manages the fleet over there. So. Yeah. And that, that person case, said that person said they need a school bus and they will not need a van for two years. Okay, if that's the case, I agree wholeheartedly with Chuck. Good. Good. All right. So the the total amount that the school needs is two hundred and fifty seven five and we anticipate I'm sorry, I've got the wrong number there. Uh they'd be ninety K. Uh, well, I added the school bus in, so uh, I'll leave the school bus out. When all is said and done, they're looking at, you said 90K? Well, I thought they were taking the 25 for this year and the 17.5 out of the 1% fund. Right, right. And we're looking to have them take the heat exchanger out of there as well. So that leaves 90K for the Ashford school. I have 79. What I'm looking at. Uh, for if you add the seventeen five plus the thirty seven thousand plus the twenty five thousand, the total is seventy nine thousand five hundred. Correct. But if they're taking that out of the one percent fund, we do not need to fund it in the CNR. Correct. Absolutely it's, correct. It still has to show on the capital plan to be eligible to have funding come out of the. I, I agree, you, Jim. You got to show that on the income side. And we are, we oh. actually down on the income side, we're gonna put, um, what do we have? 79,000. Actually, I have to do it by year. So it's going to be the, I forgot what it was. 17,500 and the rest. Yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, 17,500 no. and 62. 62,000 for the new year. And 
If I recall, Chris, when we were putting the numbers in here for the undesignated, oh, I'm sorry, I got the wrong place. That's why it's confusing. Where's the 1%? There it is. Okay. Okay. So we have that. And I'm, I'm also wondering, Catherine, on this uh, particular line item, um, you know, basically what Wayne is talking about, he was just sort of doing a cumulative math problem in his head. Can I know? Um, you know we're trying <laughs> to articulate it in pieces, but to that end, I'm wondering if it might be worth either you or me, but I'm thinking probably you would have a little more oomph on this, uh, to reach out to John Lippert and explain to him what we're thinking about with the utilization of the unexpended fund. So no, problem. no problem, no problem. To have some sort of agreement from them that they are a willing participant in this. Yep, I have, and I have Mary, Marion's on the call as well. Yep. And I, I would say that I'm sure that he's okay with all this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure too, but I'll explain to him how it needs to work as well okay. in terms of the request process. Chuck, if that helps. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure that the Board of Ed doesn't feel like they're getting railroaded. I want I want them to understand why we're trying to do what we're doing. Yep. Um, it, you know, they I want them to be a willing participant in this discussion. I, I mean, I understand that Marion's here, but it's like I can't speak for the entire Board of Finance. I, I've got to talk to, to my folk mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. she does as well. So um, I just want to make sure that everybody agrees on the Board of Ed that we're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I'm well, sure I, that they will. I can uh, assure you that they probably will feel like we're heading in the right direction. I, I'm pretty sure that they'll agree to this. Good. Yeah, and I can share with you when I spoke with Dr. Longo about the prospect, you know, I, I it, it sounded like the, you know, the Board of Ed was basically you know, saving this money to work on the core space. But if the core space ends up being taken care of in a much larger project, then they really had no issues using the uh, unexpended fund for these other, for, to manage these other issues. Yeah, very good. And I know that the last time the Board of Ed talked about the core space, we were absolutely like just in awe. You were flabbergasted at the price. Flabbergasted. You mean, you mean half a million? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're like, well, we can just build a whole new building for that. So, okay. So here's here's where um, right now what I'm looking at in these totals is we have so far on the books for the upcoming fiscal year we have one million seventy six thousand forty five dollars. We have for funding a total of, let's see, and we're not taking it, well, CNR, I got to reduce the amount of CNR, okay, right? Uh, because with the CNR we had there, we had 503,737. So real quick, I got to do this the right way. Of which, if we were to take the CNR out of the picture completely, we would have 634,308 in requests. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Give, give me a second here. I'm going to get this right. We would be uh, saying, if we take the CNR out, then we have funding of 634,308. Correct, Chuck? Correct. I can yep. see a nod in your head. Yep. Okay, so when all but, is said and done. One question on that, uh, Catherine. Does that reflect the money transferred at the Board of Finance meeting on Thursday? The no. Three okay. It does not. And actually, the amount at the Board of Finance meeting, let's just play with that a second, if that's okay with everybody. I had put that number down. I wanted to put this number in here. Chuck, it was 360-something uh, thousand, right? Yeah, it was, uh, in, a, in a broad brush stroke, it was 367,000. Okay. I, 
so I uh, just I personally think that that becomes uh, too messy of a detail in a in a form. I I know this is a working form, but I'm I'm yeah. hoping that that isn't something that we're publishing at any point. I think CNR. No, should, the, no, all that's know. being published, all that's being published is what's up here. Okay. Okay. This is just our working. Okay. Good. Document so that we can see some figures around that. So. Yep. Um. So for Wayne, I don't know Wayne if you got a pencil there or something, but um. What we had in CNR as of the June thirtieth, two thousand twenty audit was 640,726. And then we know that, Chuck, that you're playing, that you've already transferred to CNR the 367,000 additional. Correct. Which tells me that when all is said and done, we have $1,007,726 in CNR. Uh, so what that number doesn't reflect, that 640 is the current year obligation out of CNR. That's why this is tricky because we haven't, we don't have in that seven, 640, the obligations for CNR from this year, which is a moving target. Oh. So what I'm saying is we have No wonder it's messy. We have about 200,000, uh, and it's a little less than that, I think. It, it, let's just say it's around 200,000 that is not allocated in CNR right now. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is we have about 567 to 600,000 in CNR to work with for this upcoming year. Roughly five hundred sixty-seven thousand. It's really getting tight. So say that again, uh, Wayne. What Chuck is talking about is you have working for this year. You have five hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars approximately for CNR. Okay. Okay. But we can't spend more than that. Okay, guys. I just went through and recalculated everything. Everything. Yes. Yes. Go to the top of the page. Go to, back to Public Works. Yep. Bottom line is 245. Reval is 33795. Fire truck is 74250. The school, Ashford School, bottom line is 90 because you want to take the 37 and the 25 out of the one percent fund. Town right. Town, the bottom line. Uh, Chris, can I interrupt one second? That's yeah. still an expense. It's just where it's right. funded right. from. Right. I haven't gotten there yet. But it's so, but it still should be part of our bottom line, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to leave them in here. I'm just going to um, leave them in here for now. So it's all right. Just give me one sec. Mm-hmm. By the way, I'm highlighting in blue the numbers we changed, guys. Yeah. And we have... Okay. Okay. Um, um, 37. I'm just take this number out. because we don't know what the CNR is, the suggested funding for CNR is. All right, so the bottom line after figuring two projects is gonna be 930,045. $930,045. Okay, uh, bear with me a second. 935,000. 935,000 what? 930,045. Uh, Chris, that's under the total for expenditures, correct? Yes. So, Catherine, that's, oh. that's line 43. Sorry. Right. 
Is that correct? Uh, Chris, can I just double check? And, and that total is 903045. Nine three zero zero four five. Okay. Yep. And when we talk about nine three zero, she's yeah. Uh, I I think you're right, uh, Marion. So thank you. Yep. There we go. Okay. Um. What? Well, I think what I'm going to do is, and that includes everything. Correct? Yep. Yes. So CNR I think there's 295, 737. 295, 737? I think so, yep. And, and that would be the first time in a long time that we've actually utilized less than what we've put in. Congratulations. Here. Miracles can occur. And I come up with the same number. Damn. <laughs> it's a miracle. So. Bearable. I personally am very comfortable with this. All right. That's leaving the tier two things. Or the one tier two thing. Or the two tier things left. The excavator for 40. And the HVAC system for 20. That's leaving both of those in for next yep. year. I, I thought we were going to try to put the uh, excavator in for this year. Yeah. Excavator is in. Excavator is in there. Okay. It's proposed for 21 22. Yep. yep. So I'm taking the asterisk off of it. And that is for five years. One, one, two. Three, four, one, four, five. Yep. And uh, I think uh, Wayne made a really, really good suggestion. I can't remember if it was made in our last meeting or not. And it had to do with the radios. And, ra and it had to do with trying something out that we could do uh, pretty much on the cheap or for free or whatever. Uh, and see how it would actually work before we make a commitment to anything in terms of changing our radios. Is that I correct, agree Wayne? With yeah, Wayne? Just, just to refresh everybody, the town emergency management has two portable radios in that bandwidth that they can drive around this town and they can make sure that it all works. Perfect. Before the town expends thirty-seven, roughly $37,000. Smart move. I like it. I like working together. That's good. And actually, uh, your assistant emergency manager is in possession on the radios. And I, I saw one uh, yesterday, which is cool. You okay. saw one at the school? I said it was cool. Sorry, oh, okay. I'm dating myself <laughs> using the term cool. It For twenty five hundred dollars, it ought to be cool. It's a cat's meow. <laughs> okay. Do we feel that uh, is Bill still on? Bill, comments. 
just oh, comments. As an observer, which I am here, I, I totally agree with uh, with what we, what's developed here, and I think it's the best interest of the town. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would Our, second that. I'm I'm definitely in approval of where this landed. Catherine, I think this is the best committee effort we've had so far. Thank you, sir. I think this is a great group. Uh, I everybody brought something to it, so um, that works out really well. The collective heads work a lot better than a couple. So, so okay. Before we finalize this, Catherine. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, I think we've gone as far as we can today. But where we'd like to finalize this is really confirming the whole CNR. Yes. Numbers so that we're we have that a little more solid than what I've given you today. Yes. The other thing I would like to do, and I'm more than willing to do it, is um, the descriptions. Uh, put something together that shows the descriptions of all of these that can be used in your uh, budget. Uh, presentation, if you will, Charles. Um, that, would be very, Chuck, that would be absolutely welcome beyond belief. Okay, very good. <laughs> uh, and that's, yeah, and then the public will know what all of these things are. What yep. I do need to do is I do need to get what the descriptions are uh, of the monies that we are still expending for other work that's already been started, other capital improvement items. Yep. from uh, this year or the previous year, that kind of thing, where they stand. Yep. Uh, so that you have that as well. And that's, a, I think, a good practice to keep doing each year. And that keeps the public informed because you always have different people getting involved. Uh, yeah, and I think at the end this. of the fiscal year, we typically review that and try to actually close out, you know, accounts and you know things right. that have been accomplished we like take them off the list or whatever you know they're that done it's one of the most healthy things that i've seen done you know i know it started a few years ago but yep. um to make sure that we do those kinds of proper closeouts i can remember the effort that um was put forth when we first started to do some of that yep. and so to keep it going is a good thing keeps it everybody clear about what we have in flight and then what we're planning going forward so i agree <laughs> If I may ask a stupid question, just to just to be clear and to finish off our discussion on the heat exchanger, we're yep. now basically going to keep it listed as just a bookmark here. But if something does happen and there is an emergency need for a repair, that will come out of the um, one percent or the whatever is called now fund, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think all you would have to do um, is make a request, um, and I think that our board would understand that request. Okay, so is that something that Marion Mass to make sure is done now, just as a bookmark for a pending emergency with that heat exchanger? Um, I think the only thing we have to worry about right now is the 17.5. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other and then if that other thing comes up, we can we can respond to that at our very next meeting. Okay. Whenever whenever it comes up, you guys make a request, and then we we would respond to it. Okay, thank and, you. And to be and to be um. Uh, to do that maybe even a little better when I do the uh, write up on this thing is I would put in there uh, in the event that the heat exchanger fails during the current fiscal year um, that will be brought to the board of finance or whatever you know this yep. is recognized that that would be an emergency yep I agree I agree okay okay good 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 Wayne, we, you would be comfortable with that? Am I comfortable with it? Yep. I'm ecstatic. <laughs> hey, you're not often ecstatic, so I, I'm kind of liking that. I, I have been fighting for this type of approach since I've been on this board. Uh, okay, well, you got a good team here. So let's, uh, I think we're done. Could that be? Yeah, I think Catherine, my feeling is, is if this uh, can get tightened up in terms of, you know, how the how the uh, chart reads and, you know, the numbers are accurate, mm -hmm. I, I personally would be comfortable with you guys moving forward, you know, presenting this. I don't, I don't know that we need another meeting. I don't think we do. Neither do I. Well, right. Somebody should make a motion. A certain oh, motion. Oh. I recommend to the selectmen. Second. 
wait, 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 wait. What's Go on. presented is your recommendation. Right. The people, the members of the committee need to make a motion that says this, this is your recommendation. Uh, and we just give the total amount in that. In that. Can I ask a move? Can, can I ask why we're why we need to do that as as an advisory board? Are are what are we doing this because it just offers a a a a, a, a consent of this it, advisory? It it formalizes the advisory committee's opinion. Okay. Okay. I agree. So, okay. Wayne okay. Wayne made the motion. I'll second the motion. Awesome. Any more discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And lady. And lady. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so for the year, we're done with our capital projects committee? Yes. Okay. Excellent. I would say so. Maybe reaching out to people for some additional language, but I yep. think beyond that, we're done. I think that's terrific. You've done a great job. I appreciate it. And also, uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion Come to adjourn. On. Okay. All in uh, second? Aye. Wayne. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Aye. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Take care, folks. Have a great Have a weekend, weekend, everybody. Bye.